This is Pat Riley. I'm Dan Banks. These stories and more tonight. On now is five minutes. Today's guest is Oliver Hudson Kelly, the father of the Grange. In 1864, Oliver got a job as a clerk for the United States Bureau of Agriculture and traveled the eastern and southern United States following the American Civil War. He was sent by President Andrew Johnson to the South to collect agricultural data. Naturally, as he was a northerner, he was greeted with suspicion. However, Kelly quickly transcended that issue. Later, he saw the need for an organization that would bring farmers together and advance their interests. Kelly consulted with the other founders, like William Saunders and John Trimble, and in 1867, the Grange was born. The first Grange was the Potomac Grange, number one, in Washington, D.C., which still exists today. In order for the plan to work, Kelly had to garner support from farmers all over. Being that it was the 1860s, Oliver Kelly had a very difficult time communicating his idea. No cell phones, no internet, not even the telephone. Kelly eventually gained enough support and laid the foundation for the Grange. He became the secretary until 1878. Today, we will get a rare look at what Kelly was thinking when he decided to found the branch. Make no mistake, today will also be the first time a time machine is used. I'm ready for Oh no, it's the damn railroad. They're after me again. Dag nabbit. Mr. Kelly. Goddamn nag nag dag a dog a do did you you? I'm Pat Riley from the Portland Express. I'd like to have a few words with you. It's a pleasure to meet you, oh, sir. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you too. In the hootness, tootness, rootness. This is fine as green gravy, my friend. I'm all balled up, but I don't care. We'll go inside. We go have some fun. We can have. It'll be hotter than a hot, hot, hot. So, uh, Mr. Kelly, tell me about your early history. Well, Mr. Riley, I was born in Boston. My father, he was a tailor. You know, one of them guys, he likes to sew. He sews people's suits like yours. And, um, you know, when I was, as I grew up, I knew little, very little about farming. And, but I moved out to Minnesota uh, in 1850. I had 108 acres, 100, 189 acres, that's what it was. 189 acres. And it was, uh, it was nice. It was on the banks of the Mississippi River. Very nice place, very nice town. People around there, they're nice. They, they treated me well. I knew very little about farming though, so I had to learn a lot. So, Mr. Kelly, what caught your interest in farming and how did you learn how to farm? Well, Patrick, I learned farming through reading, corresponding with other farmers, and just doing it, you know, straight up doing it. Um, I wrote about my experiences in a newspaper column, if you ever read that, in the South Rapids Frontiersman. Very, very very, very local newspaper. But, you know, some people say I was innovative. I was one of the first people to rotate crops, you know, and I used one of the first irrigation. I, I brought the, the water from the river and from about 1876 to 1885. I brought the water. 
So, Mr. Kelly, in a nutshell, what exactly is the Grange, and why did you find it? Well, Mr. Ryder, the Grange, whew, got me tangled up, all balled up in a knot, you know, with he hibbity hibbity, <laughs> hibbity hibbity. Well, the Grange was like, well, it was, to, it was to take all them farmers out there, you know, the stupid monopolies and the, the railroads and the, the, the mon mon monopolies and all those kind of guys. And I wanted to make sure we got our fair share, you know what I'm saying? You know, hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I wanted to rule. Sometimes we didn't get mail very often, so I fought for that. We got mail. Uh, you know, if you know the, the word, the word, Grange, Grange, whatever you want to say, it, it, it's, it's Latin. It comes from a Latin word for grain. And if you know about granaries, that's where we keep our grain. <laughs> um, and that, that's basically about it. You know, it, it was to help farmers become better civilians and for civilians to treat farmers much better. So, if you understand that, all right, Mr. Kelly, I have to go now, but it was a pleasure to meet you, and uh, good luck with the rest of your life. Well, Patrick, uh, it was nice meeting you, too. It was a pleasure, you know. You got me all balled up inside. I'm feeling nice and fine. I got my beard. Uh, you better watch out for them damn railroads, though. You know, they're going to get you in the face, right? You know, pop you on. You better, whoo, whoo, you better watch yourself out. Uh, you got to watch out for them, those big fat cats in the hats. They're going to run you over with their iron heels. I hope you have a safe trip back. It's probably gonna take you a while to get back wherever you come from, Portland. I don't know where that is, because Oregon isn't a state yet, so you must be in Maine. That's it. Thank you for watching tonight's installment of Five Minutes. Here are some outtakes for you to enjoy. In order for his plan to work, Kelly had to garnish the fort. Uh. Go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>